Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you've got a health challenge that you or a loved one is dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, want to contribute to the conversation, have questions about ingredients or formulations or the true skin health products or the longevity products, something you may have heard about or read about, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to my blog and websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben team, phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and help spread the word and change the world about the power and importance of of a good nutritional supplement program. 866-735-2470 is their number, 866-735-2470. And if you want to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products, if your skin is thinning or you're dealing with acne or large pores or dark spots or accelerated aging, or if you want to prevent all of these conditions, you want to know about our Truth Retinol 5% gel made with Retinol 5%, the highest retinol you're going to find anywhere. In fact, the, the next highest dose of retinol in a product I've seen is 2%. And I think I've only seen that once. So you're getting a bunch of retinol. Of course, you're also getting vitamin C, a lot of it, and no preservatives, no fragrances, no fillers, no waxes, no water, no oil, no silicon, no oil, no uh, propylene glycol, no surfactant, no emulsifier, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of my Truth Skin Health products, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. You can find out all about our Truth treatment products as well as my skin health blog at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay welcome back to the bright side there's so much more to say about the connective tissue i hope you guys aren't getting sick of hearing about this we've talked about the relationship of this super vital biochemical substance super duper vital biochemical stuff that makes up about one third of us one quarter to one third of us and uh as far as it regards seemingly unrelated health issues, things like migraine, headaches, chronic, painful bladder infections, i.e. interstitial cystitis, fibromyalgia, and heart disease. Yes, heart disease. The leading cause of death in this country is a connective tissue problem in a large part. Arrhythmias, connective tissue, blood clotting, connective tissue, aneurysm, strokes, connective tissue, mitral valve prolapses, connective tissue, and of course the biggie, atherosclerosis, which biochemically simple-minded medical professionals and cardiologists will dispense statin drugs for. Yes, biochemically ignorant cardiologists will dispense statin drugs for what is a connective tissue problem. All of these issues, all of these conditions, the unifying uh, the unifying degenerative process is a connective tissue problem. Heart disease is arthritis of the heart. 
Everybody knows that arthritis is a connective tissue problem. Everybody knows that the joints are about the connective tissue, but nobody tells us that migraine headaches are about the connective tissue too. And nobody tells us that cardiovascular disease is about the connective tissue too. Cancer is in large part about the connective tissue because the connective tissue is required for the spread of cancer and the connective tissue deterioration is required for the initiation of cancer. Everything's about the connective tissue. It is the unifying element of all disease, all degenerative disease. Later on, we're going to talk about the digestive system and the digestive tract and, and, uh, and uh, its relationship to connective tissue. I read an article yesterday. Where the heck is this? New Scientist magazine. Love this magazine, by the way. If you want a good a science magazine that doesn't pander, doesn't, doesn't talk, to you, talk down to you or talk to you like you're an idiot, that has really, really powerful, important scientific information, especially health information, get new scientists. I've had a subscription for many years to this thing. Really, really, it's easy to, it's not really highly technical, but it's, it's got some really good stuff in it. Uh, Park, this is from this week's edition of New Scientist. Parkinson's, we're looking in the wrong place. The disease could start in the gut, not in the brain, scientists find. Well, hello, we've been saying this for years. I remember talking to a lady last summer. Uh, I don't want to digress here, but this is, this is so important. I remember uh, talking to a gal on the phone. She was from Illinois. Her husband ha was dealing with Parkinson's disease, and she was taking care of her husband. And she could not, and she ultimately, she would not believe that her husband's condition was digestive. And ultimately, she hung up on me. And I'm sure she thought I was some kind of quack or some kind of eating guru, which I'm not. It's just that if we're serious about health, if we're serious about getting better, we've got to understand the relationship between our chronic degenerative diseases and the health of the intestine. Anyway, this article is all about the, the relationship of the digestive tract and, um, and, and neurological issues. And they are, the scientist, or actually the author of this study, is, it writes this article like it's the biggest news ever. That because, oh my God, it's so stunning that Parkinson's disease starts in the gut. Well, we've been talking about this on the bright side for years. I've been talking about this for decades in my practice. It is just common sense if you understand how the body works. If you don't understand how the body works, you're like, oh, well, that's my brain. What's that got to do with my intestine? That's got nothing to do with my intestine. It's all the way up here. My intestine is all the way down there. It's connected. It's linked. When your connective tissue deteriorates in your intestine, you're off to the disease races. That's called leaky gut syndrome. And folks, it's behind everything. Leaky gut syndrome initiates it all, and we all have probably have some degree of it. Unless we're super pristine about what we're doing, and I don't know anybody who is, including me, we're all going to have some degree of leaky gut. But if we're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease, you can rest assured you're dealing with it, and leaky gut syndrome is a connective tissue problem, and we will be talking about this in the coming days. But for now, I want to talk about the relationship, as we started yesterday, between having beautiful skin and the connective tissue. Everybody wants beautiful skin, especially this time of year. And I've been in the skincare business for many years. I've been selling topical products for the skin, and I know you can do lots of things with topical products. But the hidden nature of the skin, the hidden nature of the living tissue of the skin deceives us into not addressing the real issues when we have skin problems. And by skin problems, I'm talking about even cosmetic issues. Nothing antagonizes me more than biochemically ignorant skincare professionals and even, even nice hobbyists who decide they're going to be in the skincare business and they're going to make skincare products. You know, I, I don't get ticked off on these hobbyists as much, but business people, marketers, bookkeepers. I know bookkeepers in the business who know nothing about the skin, but they're selling products because they can make a lot of money. And that's mean. That's not right. The skin is part of the body, in is an organ. We always say it's the largest organ. Skin beauty is skin health. And it's not fair to sell a skincare product that's not going to address skin health and then claim that you're making somebody's skin look better. It's just not right. And I see doctors do it, and I see nurses do it, and I see medical professionals do it. It's just not right. We've got all kinds of people selling us these potions and lotions, the remedies for wrinkles and rashes and other conditions, and the business people, the marketers, the bookkeepers who see dollar signs and profit margins, and they don't know what a fibroblast is, they don't know what an active ingredient is, and they don't care that they're deceiving the innocent public with their useless products. It's just mean and it's not fair. If you're going to take care of the skin, folks, topically, you've got to address the connective tissue. If you're going to take care of the skin, you've got to use nutrition. Internal as well as topical. All right, we'll continue and come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on 
Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the Bright Side, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early, and we'll get to all the calls, or as many calls as we can, at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of our Truth, Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, Retinol being probably the single most important ingredient you could use to drive the production of connective tissue, to induce the production of the connective tissue from the magical cells called the fibroblasts. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, Retinol 5% gel also contains vitamin C, which is probably the second most important, arguably tied with retinol, for uh, the most important topical nutrient for driving the production of connective tissue. If you want anti-wrinkle effects, if you want anti-aging effects, if you want skin healing effects, if you're dealing from some kind of wound, or if you just want general anti-aging effects, you need to use vitamin C in its fat-soluble form in high concentrations. You need to use retinol on a periodic basis once a week, twice a week, once every 10 days. You'll have to see for yourself because retinol is somewhat stimulating and you need enough of it and you want to make sure you're using your retinol and your vitamin C without preservatives, without fragrances, without anything that could irritate the skin or without anything that could cause some kind of toxic side effect, which basically means irritation. Retinol 5% Gel, True Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Balm are all available at our uh, at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking skin, we're talking beautiful skin, we're talking healthy skin, we're talking anti-aging skin, and if you want to have beautiful anti-aging skin, you've got to know what the skin is. It's pretty basic, it's pretty simple. You don't have to know all the details of the skin, but the, here's the thing about the skin. Its looks are deceiving. You see, we look at the skin, it looks like it's just one thing, but the skin is layered. I know we've talked about this many times on this program, but we've got new listeners, and re repetition is reinforcement, so it doesn't really, it's important to keep saying these things. The skin is layered. The top layer is dead. So when you rub a product in your skin, and then you make an assessment on how valuable or how good or how effective that product is, by rubbing your skin after you put the product on, all you're doing is feeling the skin or feeling the product. You're not doing, you're not feeling your skin. How your skin feels after you apply a product doesn't tell you anything about the product or about the effectiveness of the product. How your skin feels after you put a product only tells you what happened to the dead tissue on the surface. You may have softened the dead tissue with the wax. That's about it. The action in the skin is in the lower layers. The action of the skin is deep, relatively deep. Now, you know, it's not deep because the skin is only a, a, has only the thickness of maybe 10 pieces of paper. But the very tippy top of the skin where most skincare products work is only as thin as one-tenth of a piece of paper. The next layer, the epidermis, is about, one, about as thick as a piece of paper. The real action in the skin is in the dermis. And guess what? The dermis is connective tissue. So under the skin is made up of three main layers. You've got about one-tenth of a piece of notebook paper that's made up of dead stuff, and that's protective. Technically, they call that the stratum corneum. That just means the hard layer, and that's the layer that protects everything. Underneath that, you've got the epidermis. That's about as thick as one piece of paper. Now, we're talking here uh, not very thick, folks. A tenth of a piece of paper for the top, uh, one piece of paper for the next layer. The action is in the dermis, which is underneath, and that's about as thick as maybe 10 pieces of paper. So you've got a tenth of a piece of paper, one piece of paper, 10 pieces of paper. The vast majority, you can tell, the vast majority of the skin is the connective tissue. And most of the signs of skin aging are connective tissue related. Wrinkles, fine lines, crow's feet, crepey skin. There's a commercial out now for a cream for crepey skin. Horse hockey, baloney, please. If you want to deal with crepey skin, you've got to be in the connective tissue. That means retinol and vitamin C, period. Period. Those are the only two things that we know of that will topically address connective tissue in vivo. That means in real life. Not in a test tube, not in a Petri dish, not in a laboratory, because that's where most of these studies are done, in Petri dishes. In real life, the only two things that you can apply topically on the skin to drive the production of connective tissue with any great effect is going to be vitamin A and vitamin C. Keloids are also about the connective tissue. Keloids are a horrible connective tissue problem. African-American males get it after they shave, and, you, and man, it is an awful, awful condition. It can be awful. You can have mild degrees of it, but it can be awful. Keloids are about the connective tissue, and doctors have no idea what to do. 
Keloids are about connective tissue that's, that, that is, uh, that's growing really fast, fibrosis. And we haven't talked about that, actually. We'll probably talk about that later on. Whenever you hear the word fibrosis, you've got a problem with the connective tissue. Keloids are a big lump of fiber that can occur when the skin is trying to heal. If it's not healthy, the skin will heal incorrectly, and the fibers will keep, the body will keep producing fibers, and you get these big lumps of fiber, and those are called keloids. Scars are the same way. Car scars are caused by uh, an overproduction of connective tissue. How the connective tissue grows is tightly regulated. So we've been talking about connective tissue not growing fast enough. That's what a wrinkle is. But you can have the opposite problem, connective tissue growing too much. Fibrosis is an example of that. And so are keloid and so are scars. Sun damage is also a connective tissue problem. And all of this means understanding how to work with connective tissue is critical if you're going to have beautiful skin. And it's the key to having youthful, smooth skin and a wrinkle-free appearance. And it has nothing to do with a melon extract from Cindy Crawford, by the way. That is the dumbest idea. Dumb, Dr. Savak. Please. A melon extract for your connective tissue. Please. Or any superficial creams that you get on QVC or you get on the Internet. To build the connective tissue in the skin, you've got to be in the fibroblast. You've got to figure out how to activate the fibroblast. Now, this fibro fibroblast is, with, in my opinion, the absolute most, absolutely the most spectacular cell in the body, the fibroblast is. It is unbelievably important for health. We've talked about the connective tissue a lot. So you, if, if you understand the importance of the connective tissue for having beautiful skin, if you understand the importance of the connective tissue for keeping your heart healthy, if you understand the importance of the connective tissue for keeping your joints healthy, if you understand the importance of the connective tissue for keeping everything healthy, well, guess what? It all comes from the fibroblast. The fibroblast is the master cell of the connective tissue. All the stuff, the collagen, which is the, the, the fiber that gives the connective tissue its strength. The elastin, which is another type of fiber which gives the connective tissue its elastic nature. Elastin from elastic. All of the gooey jelly substance that makes up the mass of the connective tissue. The extracellular matrix, the ECM as they call it. It's made up of hyaluronic acid, which some of you guys have heard of, I'm sure. that You can use that as a supplement. We've talked about that the polysaccharides, the complex sugars that are all jelly material that give the connective tissue its, its, its kind of jello-like nature, its springy nature, its shock absorbing properties are all about these polysaccharides and, all, and the hyaluronic acid and the protein sugar complexes that are called proteoglycans. All of it comes from the fibroblast. So understanding how to work with the fibroblast is the key. The fiber, in, in the world of skin care, the fibroblast, and I know there's a lot of estheticians listening to this program. You guys know in, uh, when you're in school, they talk about the fibroblast. They talk about activating the fibro, fibroblast because in the world of skin care, activation of the fibroblast is the holy grail. Skin care ingredients are measured for their anti-aging properties in the world of chemistry, in the world of aesthetics and dermatology by how well they activate the fibroblast. Well, guess what? Nothing does it better than vitamin A and vitamin C. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time every day and 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting up benfuchsarchives.com. That is a super cool website. That's got all my stuff, uh, all my various websites, truth websites and and uh, blogs, uh, critical health news and pharmacist Ben and Brightside Ben all in one site at uh, benfuchsarchives.com. Also a search engine. If you miss a program, you can search by various subjects and topics. I'm not sure how they do that, but but Peter has done it, and thank you to Peter for doing it. And also, you can get a search engine up at brightsideben.com as well. Got five years of archives, uh, going on six years of archives. That's a lot of good health information at brightsideben.com, benfuchsarchives.com. Of course, you can also purchase Longevity products off of uh, our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and 
uh, brightsidebend.com, pharmacistbend.com, criticalhealthnews.com. And you can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470 if you want to purchase any products. And if you want to purchase any of our CBD products, uh, hemp oil products, c- cannabidiol products, if you're dealing with seizure disorders or anxiety or pain or, God forbid, cancer even, uh, there's a lot of really wonderful literature about CBD and various health challenges. And more and more, we're learning about the importance of CBD and cannabis, as it's called. Uh, in fact, I've got a couple articles here. One from, uh, this is from the Journal of Neuroimmune Pharmacology. Researchers find chemicals in marijuana could treat multiple sclerosis. I might have read this one already uh, to you guys. But in any case, multiple sclerosis, which is an inflammatory disease, uh, which affects the immune system, affects or involves the immune system. It affects the nerve cells, as most of you probably know. The inflammation and the pain that's associated with multiple sclerosis may be alleviated by using, at least according to this study, by using CBD and uh, also THC, which is the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana. Uh, CBD is just amazing, amazing stuff. According to this article, researchers took immune cells and they found that the presence of CBD and THC restrained them from triggering the production of various inflammatory molecules. That's the mechanism of CBD and THC. And that leads me to another article, this one from the New Zealand Medical Journal. And this one's really interesting. Uh, Headline, Medicinal Cannabis Harms or Benefits, Who Decides? And this is an article that's wondering about who is supposed to decide whether cannabis is good or bad. And guess what they decided? Guess what the New England Medical Journal decided? Well, it should be doctors that tell us. How do you like that? Uh, There's evidence around the harms and problems of using cannabis, and the evidence of its effectiveness as a medicine is weak, says Dr. Giles Newton Howes from the Department of Psychological Medicine at the University of Otago, uh, Wellington. So I guess uh, doctors don't believe, or at least according to this article, some doctors don't believe that it's worth it. Uh, And uh, the article concludes that we need to have uh, clinicians engaged in the debate. That is, doctors should be telling us what to do, basically. All doctors should have an interest in this, from primary care physicians to subspecialists. No, doctors should not have an interest in this. We should have an interest in it. The patient should have an interest in it. It's none of the doctor's business whether we decide to use CBD to medicate ourselves, whether we decide to use anything to get better. Why shouldn't we involve the doctor? How does it... This is craziness. Here's another good one. This is from New Scientist. Psychedelic drug helps depression. Can a psychedelic trip change the way people with life-threatening... This is New Scientist, by the way. This is a hardcore scientific journal. Uh, Can a psychedelic trip change the way people with life-threatening cancer face death? Well, it seems so. Yes, psilocybin, which you go to jail for. That's mushrooms. That's the active ingredient in so-called magic mushrooms. Psilocybin, a hallucinogenic compound, was banned in the 1960s. Who banned it? The government. But a better understanding of the drug has sparked a revival of research into its potential benefits for depression and anxiety. If you're depressed and you're anxious, you could take a trip, and apparently, anyway, uh, this is from the Journal of Psychopharmacology, apparently the benefits, uh, 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 you could get benefits for depression and anti-anxiety, uh, and anxiety, and not only that, the benefits were still present in 80% of the participants six months later. How do you like that? There's no drug that there's no uh, prescription drug that can do that. But of course, you the government says you can't have psilocybin. Just like the government is soon to say you're not going to be able to have CBD. It's looking like that with our new Trump administration. Anyway, I'm telling you folks, what we got to do is we got to have a health revolution that says we're going to take care of our own health business, not necessarily by treating it with drugs, but by using all the wonderful strategies that we talk about here on the bright side, especially when it comes to nutritional supplementation. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Got lines open for you. Let's go to Alabama and welcome. Oh shoot, <laughs> Shante, please call back. We just lost you, and I apologize for that. We were going to just go to Shantae in Alabama, and now she's gone. And that's my fault, Shantae. So please call back, and we'll get you right up. Uh, meantime, I'll read you a couple more, stu- uh, couple more studies here. This, is, this one's really cool. This is in a study. This is from, uh, this is from uh, the company that makes Snickers bars. Guess what? Oh, this was actually published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Uh, it's based on a study that was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Uh, who, who, they came out with an article that ripped on sugar. Well, apparently, the makers of Snickers bars, Mars Incorporated, uh, Mars Incorporated, is now very critical of this in, of this uh, paper on sugar. 
Mars Incorporated, the maker of Skittles and M&Ms and Snickers bars, is breaking ranks with other food companies and denouncing the paper that says that we should be limiting sugar based, uh, and they're saying that it's based on weak evidence. According to Mars, the manufacturer of Snickers bars, we should be eating more sugar. The paper is based on weak evidence. If you want to do one single thing for your health, folks, if you want to do one single thing to get better, reduce your intake of sugar. Now, I'm not saying sugar is not important for a small amount of sugar is not important because it is a small amount, a teeny, teeny amount. But if you want to do one single thing to get better, reduce your intake of sugar. And by sugar, I'm including starchy, cereal, bready kinds of foods. I know we talk about this a lot, but it's so darn important. The human body is not designed to handle all the sugar we're given it. We're eating nearly a pound of it a day. If you are going to ingest a lot of sugar, if you, you know, this is the season to eat sugar, make sure you drink a lot of water after you eat your sugar. And I'm including bread and pasta and rice and potatoes in that equation. So after you eat these kinds of foods, if you dilute your, if you, uh, uh, dilute your, your blood with water, you'll dilute your blood sugar. You'll lower the concentration. That's a quick, easy way for diabetics, pre-diabetics, or anybody who's dealing with an inflammatory issue, or children, or anybody, really, who goes overboard with the sugar to quickly lower the concentration of sugar in the blood. Drinking a lot of water. Of course, using your B vitamins is very important, especially niacin and thiamine, especially vitamin B1 and B3. Use your ultimate niacin. And use your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Of course, Sweeties is also very helpful. Chromium and Vanadium, chromium being a part of what's called the glucose tolerance factor. And then selenium has insulin like properties. It's not insulin, but it's got insulin like properties. So if you're dealing with insulin resistance or pre diabetes or diabetes, or you're eating a lot of sugar, make sure you're using selenium, which is one of mine and Dr. Wallach's all time favorite nutritional supplements 200 to 400, even up to 600 micrograms a day of selenium. Lots of wonderful benefits from selenium, important for the thyroid, important for the heart, selenium deficiencies associated with heart disease. And uh, it's a vi- one of those minerals that's difficult to get from food. All right, Shantae, hang on. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. Don't go away. And if you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return with your phone calls and more good health information on The Bright Side right after this. On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open. Let's move on to Alabama. Good morning, Shantae. What's going on? How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. I've been enjoying your uh, explanations about the skin and so forth. Okay. And I've heard up a question I thought would be appropriate to ask on top Sure. That is, okay. on the sides of my upper leg. You can rub those. If I were to actually go get a massage, it would probably literally kill me. It is How so, so sore from the hip area okay. down to the knee. Is it um, in the muscle? It, no, it's not muscle. No. Skin? It's just sore to the touch. And I just uh-huh. know that that's not healthy. And <laughs> Good. That, that's you're right. And I don't know what it means. And, and it's just on the body. side of the leg, just on the side, nowhere else in your body. Well, actually, no. It is also sometimes in my arms. I can rub the outside of my arm and the inside okay. of my arm. All right. Um, upper. That's you know, a su- from the elbow. Okay. Up. Got it. That's a connective tissue problem, more than likely. That's a sign that there's something going on inside the connective tissue that's sensitizing the nerves that are associated with it. Usually means some kind of something's getting into the blood and being deposited in that area. So what I'd be looking for is food problems, as always. You should always be looking for food problems. It's unlikely that you'll have that without any food problems. Now, I'm guessing you're in your 40s or 50s, correct? Mm-hmm. So you've got a, had, you have a lot of years of, uh, of messing up the blood if, you have, if, you, if you've had a food problem going on for a while. Do you notice any issues with foods, bloating, discomfort? And, and if you don't, you should look for them. That's the first thing always, but especially if you have unexplained pain or unexplained soreness. Uh, now, you say it's not in the muscle, so I'm going to assume it's not. If it, uh, if it was in the muscle, I would tell you to start doing some stretching. But the fact that it's moving around like that tells me it's more than likely in the connective tissue. So what you want to do 
do is you want to start working with foods and with the digestive system. So do, uh, you know, I don't know if you've heard the program before. I say it all the time. I'll just say it again for new listeners. You want to, this is true for all mister, mysterious kinds of health challenges. You fast for a couple of days or you do a swear OV cleanse either way. Fasting is a little bit easier, but a swear OV cleanse is, is a good idea also. If some folks don't want to fast totally, get a couple, get a, a six pack of swear OV or a couple of six packs of swear OV, do half a bottle every hour for one or two or three days and then you do a food diary do you notice any digestive health issues that's usually that's a shortcut if you notice you have them that'll, that'll save you some time if you don't notice you, you can still do the food diary and the elimination diet but if you notice food problems that's a shortcut that'll that'll save you a little bit of a, a little bit of hassle because you can you can immediately start to eliminate foods or do you notice any issues I can't say specifically. I've not been on gluten or dairy. No, 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 no. Okay, I don't want to hear right. what you're not on. What... But if you're no, if you're not on gluten or dairy, you, you probably have some reason to not be on gluten and dairy. So you probably have a history that way, right? I'm not. I'm not being mean to you. I'm trying to. No, sir. Not to... at all. I simply okay. understood the. It made sense to me that both those items, along with the sugar, are not good for us. So I. They're not. Oh, what happens when you eat dairy? Does anything I happen when you eat dairy? Eat dairy. I mean, but what happens when, if you did, if you went off the wagon and decided to have some ice cream, what would happen? Anything? Would you feel uncomfortable? No, probably okay. not. I mean, All right. Well, we'll start to pay attention then, okay? Start to uh, uh, really ap apply some vigilance and attention to your responses to foods. In fact, what I would do if I were you is pick your favorite food, whatever you love the most. And this is true for everybody. If this is the best way to do the, food, the, uh, the elimination diet and the food diaries, pick your favorite food. Start off with the food that you would go to if you were feeling miserable or if you were feeling depressed or if you were feeling really hungry. The first food you would think of. Or if you weren't hungry and you were eating, what food would you pick? And that's usually a favorite food, and the, we tend to crave the foods that we have the most problems with. So find your favorite food and eat it all day and see what happens. Now, chances are pretty good you're going to either notice digestive problems or you're going to notice more soreness or more sensitivity to, your, to the touch, as, you're, as you described it. Uh, and then you're going to be able to, uh, then you eliminate that food and you go to the next food. And you keep doing that. That's called the elimination diet, and you want to keep notes while you're doing it. That's a food diary. All right? That's the first thing you always do when there's a mysterious kind of ailment. Always, always, always go back to the digestive system. First and foremost, not because I'm Mr. Health Nut or Mr. Eating Guru. I'm not, as I said before. But this is the main way that uh, sensitizing toxins get into the body. All right? So that's the first step. The next thing you want to do is you want to do all the things we do for the digestive tract. Uh, and I'm not sure if you're already doing them. It sounds like you know what you're doing a little bit. So are you doing fermented foods and probiotics and apple cider vinegar with your meals and all that kind of stuff? Um, yes, I make my own sauerkraut. And I have nice, food nice. And um, you know, so I've been doing the sauerkraut quite a bit because keep I'm keep going, going with it. Going keep on. going with it. Yeah, keep going with it. And any fermented foods you can, you know, get creative with fermented foods. But sauerkraut's my favorite fermented food because cabbage is so good for the digestive system. So, uh, but any fermented food will work as well as apple cider vinegar with your meals. In fact, even doing kombucha with your meals can help acidify the contents of, uh, of, of the digestive tract and improve digestion. Kombucha having an acidic quality to it. Um, so kombucha or apple cider vinegar with your meals. And then also uh, the ultimate enzymes from longevity with your meals. You can also do the Fucoid Z. That's a general blood tonic, but it also helps coat and soothe the digestive tract. Hyaluronic acid can have the same benefit. Aloe vera can also have the same benefit. I absolutely love aloe vera as a, a, a soothing, medicinal, and, and pretty much a nutritional kind of substance. Uh, I don't want to say it's a supplement, but it does have nutritional value. It also will coat and soothe the digestive tract and stimulate healing. Any algae or any kind of slimy, gooey substance will have that effect. Uh, as I say, hyaluronic acid is also particularly helpful. Uh, glutamine powder is helpful for the digestive system as well. Make sure you're doing an entire, um, uh, a, an entire uh, nutritional supplement protocol, especially fatty vitamins and essential fatty acids. Under conditions of essential fatty acid deficiency and under conditions of fatty vitamin deficiency, the skin will become sensitized. That means it can, you can, uh, 
experience pain or discomfort, but also eczema, also dermatitis and rashes, also unexplained itching. All of these can be the result of essential fatty acid deficiency and fatty vitamin deficiency. And by the way, if you're taking EFAs, that doesn't mean that you're getting them in the blood. If you're taking fatty vitamins, that doesn't mean you're getting them in the blood because both of these require a fully functioning liver and intestine and a bile, uh, enough bile and a gallbladder and pancreas. A lot of things have to go right for us to absorb these nutrients. So in, in the world of nutrition, it's not only what we take, it's what we absorb. So make sure that you don't have any malabsorption issues as well. I'd be focusing, number one, on the digestive system first, as I explained, and then secondly, on fats and fatty vitamins, both in taking them and making sure that you're absorbing them at the intestinal level. Does that help you, ma'am? I'm taking three of the EFA pluses. Take, no, that's not enough. Nine. Nine. Nine a day. Nine a day. Three, three times a day. If you can do it with food, that's helpful. Also, if you can do them with your apple cider vinegar and all your absorption aids, that, that's helpful as well. The ultimate enzymes, by the way, are made with bile salts and pancreatin, in addition to digestive enzymes for the stomach, and both bile salts and pancreatin will help you with fat absorption. So if you can do your EFAs with food and with your ultimate enzymes, that will help. I'm suspecting if you're, it sounds like you, you're already knowledgeable, Shante. So I would suspect that there's some malabsorption issues, in addition to perhaps not enough nutrients, um, malabsorption is something else I'd be focusing on, okay? Could I ask another question? About sure. Your, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my daughter has had, um, an, well, she just went to the ear, nose, and throat doctor because she's had a throat irritation. Okay. And when he looked in there, he said that there is an ulcer in there. In and, the throat? Yes. And That's not good. Said, Is she smoking? No. Does she smoke her? Oh, no, she's no? young, too. How, how old? She's only 18. Oh, that's definitely not good. If there's an ulcer in there, that means she's breaking down. I'd be looking at general health. If she's breaking and she's not smoking, she's not doing anything to locally attack that area, that means the connective tissue is starting to break down. That means her body's starting to break down. Not good. How is that is possible? It, she's been on the... So any, I don't understand. Well, that's here's how you do this. Let me, let me explain. I don't understand either. I've been on longevity for... A, no, let me explain how you do this. Let me, totally, let me explain how you do this. Both of you and her have the same kind of issues, believe it or not. This is how you do it. When you have a mystery like this, what you want to do is you want to look for other symptoms. So if you have an unexplained soreness in your leg, like you, or you have unexplained ulceration in the, uh, in the throat, like your daughter, this is what you do, all right? You've got to look for other symptoms. You've got to have dots. I call this triangulation. That means you've got to have three dots so that you can get a picture. And I've used this analogy before. I'll use it again. If you have a canvas, right, like a painter's canvas, and you have one dot in the middle of the canvas, you have no idea what it is. If you have start to put multiple dots there, a picture will begin to emerge. And this is what you're looking for whenever there is an unexplained health challenge. This is for not just for Shantae in Alabama. This is for anybody out there listening. Whenever there's an unexplained health challenge, what you want to do is you want to look for multiple symptoms so you can get a picture of what's happening in the body. I wish we had more time, but we're just out of, we're just out of time, Shantae. I apologize. But if you want to call back tomorrow, we'll continue because this is a, a very important subject. And I'm sorry if I left you on hold as well. Um, you got to call in earlier, folks, so we can get to everybody. Um, that's it. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out our True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Check out all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.